placenta is a unique organ consisting of tissues of two individuals. From an anatomical point of view, it has a maternal part and uh, an embryonic or fetal part. Let's start with the embryonic or fetal part, which grows from a so-called chorionic plate and forms the chorionic villi, the origin of which we have already discussed. The chorionic villi are br branching and finally they will reach the maternal part. The villi are in reality branching in more generations than the simplified scheme suggests. So the overall surface is uh, significantly enlarged here. Which correlates with the transport uh, function of placenta. Now let's consider the circulation. The blood that comes from the embryo comes through the umbilical arteries. However, it's low in oxygen and nutrients content. It's branching according to the structure of the villi. It's entering these. It's receiving oxygen and nutrients is getting rid of the waste products and it returns back contributing to the umbilical vein. So whenever discussing the circulation let's also discuss the the, the direction of the bloodstream. So that's the blood of the embryo. or fetus. We call the embryo an embryo till the end of the eighth week. Starting with the ninth week, we call it fetus. That's just terminology. So from the from the chorionic plate we got these free villi majority of the villi are free villi, while some are reaching the opposite part of the placenta, which is the decidual plate. Decidua being just a different name for the endometrium uh, in pr during pregnancy. And those villi that are reaching the decidual plate are called the anchoring villi. as they really mechanically anchor into this decidua. Let's consider the maternal blood that comes via the endometrial arteries that are opening in the space among the villi. So they are in contact with the surface of the villi. This is blood that is rich in nutrients and oxygen and it comes back, it returns back and leaves via endometrial veins. So this is the maternal blood which for some times is leaving the blood vessels therefore traveling through the extravascular space this space among the villi is called intervillous space. And it contains the maternal blood. So just to point out the decidua, 
is the endometrium during pregnancy, right? So this would be the contribution to the umbilical vein. And this would be the blood coming from the umbilical arteries. From the macroscopical perspective, the whole placenta is subdivided into smaller lobes or units called, called cotyledons. If you would make a section through one of this villa and put it under the microscope, we would see the barrier separating the blood of the mother from the blood of the fetus. This barrier evolves, so let me compare two time points. Let us say four weeks versus four months. In the first trimester, a cross section through one of these free villi will look like that. No surprise. There will be the sensitio trophoblast on the surface. So it's a multinucleated tissue. Supported by the by one layer of cuboidal cells, that's the cytotrophoblast. And we know that in the tertiary coronary villi we got the capillaries the wall of which is formed by endothelial cells. These capillaries are embedded within the extraembryonic mesenchyma which is a very loose undifferentiated connective tissue with some star-shaped or spindle-shaped cells and lots of extracellular matrix, namely water binding glycos and nilicons. The interval space is filled with the maternal blood here. So what is the barrier that separates the maternal from the the maternal and the fetal blood. Here is the interval space. First layer to pass is the sensitio trophoblast. Then the cytotrophoblast, then the extraembryonic mesenchyma, which is of variable thickness, and the endothelium of the capillaries. The capillaries are, they contain the embryonic blood. So this is the placenta barrier, right?
as uh, mammals have a diverse uh, degree of reduction the barrier of between the maternal and fetal blood we call the human placenta to be hemo to be of hemo chorile type and it's the most advanced type of placenta among mammals as the blood is separated blood of the mother is separated from the blood of the embryo by the layer of chorion and chorion consists of these three layers however that would not be sufficient for the metabolic needs of the growing fetus so the placenta is uh, undergoes uh, maturation and let us say mature placenta in the second trimester has somehow reduced that barrier still the syncytiotrophoblast is on the surface however there was a considerable reduction of the cytotrophoblast so there is n no continuous layer of cytotrophoblast anymore there are only individual cell remnants called Langhans cells and more importantly these capillaries are not in the or majority of the capillaries are not located in the center of the core of the villi instead they move directly below the syncytiotrophoblast thus significantly reducing the barrier for all the mechanisms of the placenta transport which includes passive mechanisms such as diffusion and also active transport and facilitated diffusion the core is still filled with the extra embryonic mesenchyma So this is the syncytiotrophoblast. These are remnants of the cytotrophoblast called Langhans cells. The capillaries have moved uh, below the the syncytiotrophoblast. So these are the fetal capillaries and uh, the reduced placenta barrier now comprises just the syncytiotrophoblast and the endothelium of the capillaries a mature placenta a term placenta at the time of the birth is a uh, disc with with uh, an estimated uh, surface of approximately 14 square meters it uh, contains approximately 150 milliliters of maternal blood that exchanges approximately three to four times per minute so any bleeding from the placenta could be could cause a significant danger of exsanguination for the mother the weight of a full term placenta called full term placenta right is approximately 50 grams and the dimensions are approximately 16 centimeter in diameter and 3 centimeters in thickness